Hello designers, this is Rebecca, and this is your assignment one secondary branding identity design critique. So before we get into what, your what you, you submitted, let's go ahead and go over the overview. So um, you were to design a logo and product mock-ups for a children's acting camp at the Shakespeare's Globe Theatre in London, England. Um, what objects would children need to bring to the day camp and what are some mementos or merchandise they might receive or buy from the experience? Use the existing globe branding to inspire the Groundlings children act, Children's Acting Camp secondary branding. And how can you make the main brand and sub-brand work together visually? So your scope was to research and then create 32 secondary logo sketches, create one logo comp, create a brand standard sheet, uh, mock-ups for two or more merchandise examples with a place logo, and create a minimally designed presentation showing the logo design process with their mock-ups. Uh, so I had you read about the arts and crafts movement, create a persona, do a body storming exercise, create a mind map and a mood board. And that was all going to be part of the project, as well as your logo thumbnails, um, rebuilding the current Shakespeare's logo, Shakespeare's Globe logo in an illustrator, creating the digital design comp for the final logo based on your feedback from your thumbnail submission and apply it to your mock-ups. So for the requirements checklist, I'm just going to go through here. The first slide will have your assignment name, uh, your name, my name, and the class name. Assignment two will show your persona. Assignment three will show a photo of the backpack exercise and short notes on your exercise with any body storm um, the, of the body storming exercise. Uh, the fourth one will show your mind map, and the fifth slide will show your thumbnails. Sixth slide, your brand guide. Seventh slide, two to four product mockups in a little grid. And um, the next group of slides will have each product on its own slide as large as possible. Your, uh, your next slide will have written reflections on your overall project and any work cited and then a thank you slide. All right, let's get into it. First up is Marjorie. Good looking first slide, Marjorie, great. Let's check out your next slide. I absolutely love this persona. This picture of this little boy is so cute. I love his, uh, his favorite foods and um, what makes him happy. And I love the little um, part about his parents supporting the passion. Really fantastic. This is really great. I'm glad you had fun with this. And um, yeah, it's really interesting, like going through the experience of packing. So I'm really, really excited that you did it and, and had a good time. This is really great mind map. I love seeing this extra objects category, essential objects and fun objects. I think that was a really good way to kind of break things up including food. This is a fantastic mood board. Um, I like seeing like the theater blacks there and um, your flower inspirations as well as the pictures of the globe and this like uh, Shakespeare plushie and these uh, fantastic arts and crafts um, uh, examples as well. Really nice. Some text in there, some fonts, beautiful. And here are your thumbnails. This is similar to what you ended up going with, number 26, and I love it. And you worked it in really beautifully. So this is your um, brand guide. The colors look really great. And it looks like you just kept um, the whole logo the same color, which I think is fine. It, it turned out really nice on your mock-ups, which we'll look at in just a minute. And um, I like this, uh, this wood texture to um, simulate the wood um, print of the original logo and how it, it goes across your rows. It's nice and seamlessly. It's really pretty. Works in really nice. I love this triple line and the um, difference in the value of color throughout the rows. It's really pretty. And the rows you mentioned in your notes that it symbolizes, you know, children's passion and their uh, growth in this um, camp environment but it also is a great Shakespeare reference. You know, he talks about roses in lots of his pieces and, um, and same with like Romeo and Juliet, a rose with, with any other name is but a rose or whatever. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, I think it's fantastic. And I love this color palette, great font choices, really nice. So if you, the only things I would recommend is uh, maybe giving this triple stroke a try on these horizontal rules 
and the space between the, the top um, rule and the top of the word groundlings as in this space here, it feels a little odd. Um, I think it would be better if it was equally spaced um, with the smaller gap there. And uh, you might consider, I was going to say maybe adding some texture, the wood texture to the word groundlings as well, but I don't think it needs it. I think if you were to do the triple um, like stroke through these horizontal rules there, that might be enough texture in the text. The alignment also feels a bit off with uh, where the text is placed alongside the um, the icon on the left. So I, I just want you to just try aligning it along the top and then aligning it center and then seeing which of the three, like this, this alignment here versus the top and the center, you like the best and just, you know, um, that's going to really be up to you to decide there. Okay, great. These are fantastic mock-ups. I love this rose on the sleeves. That's so cute. This is a great idea to have a little notebook for them to make notes in at camp. That's fantastic. So good choices there. Great. I like seeing them nice and big. The color of this is really great with your color palette too. Fantastic. Excellent. Thank you so much. Next up is Chastity. Good looking first look, uh, slide there. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, next up we have your persona. And this looks really good. I love her interests and uh, your description of her. Oreos and peanut butter. Sounds like a girl after my own heart. I love it. So here is your little mind map. So um, it looks like the things you were focusing on are water bottles, backpacks, notebooks, and sweaters. And here is your... Um, bodyscaping picture. So I would have liked to see the backpack like actually packed with stuff inside, but um, you know, that's okay. And then here is your uh, brand page. And I love this logo very much. I love this color palette. I think it looks really nice. I like the O being used here. I love what you did with mixing your fonts. Um, I, you know, having two fonts in your logo looks really nice. This is um, such a fantastic uh, um, font. I love it. It's just perfect for arts and crafts. Um, and it even has some texture to it, which I think is really cool. I'm going to return to this in just a second. I'm going to go through and show your comps. So I love this yellow with it. That's part of your color palette. And this uh, violet looks really nice too. These notebooks aren't quite in your color palette, but... Um, it's all right. Like I'm not crazy about the logo on white, like on a white screen with these bright colors behind it. So maybe if you found some white notebooks, I mean a mock-up with an, a white notebook, um, that might work out a little bit better. Or I'm not sure if you tried it on a black notebook, that would be cool too, I think. Um, you just have to see if there's enough contrast there. Great. Okay, so let's look at your logo. Um, it looks like your logo is a line left and you have sort of a jagged edge over here on the right with a logo that is so close to being rectangular. Go ahead and make it rectangular at this point. So um, I recommend maybe you can uh, spread out your tracking a bit. Um, first of all, center align it and then spread your tracking out until your left side and right side line up with camp. And you can do the same thing with um, children's, but there is an apostrophe that needs to go here. I'm sorry, uh, it needs to go somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> it needs to go um, between the N and the S. So if you add the apostrophe, you may not need to um, adjust the tracking of the second row there. But the third row definitely will need to spread out a little bit. You could also increase the font size. That's a way to get it to be... Uh, to stretch to the right as well. So whichever looks better to you. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it's a fantastic font. I just love it and I love the color combinations, beautiful. So you mentioned in the um, reflections that you felt it was a bit childish to create a logo about something you initially had limited knowledge on, um, but then found that it was probably good practice for individuals working with clients who have unique businesses. So a lot of times when um, 
people first kind of come up with an idea for their business or their um, secondary business, the logo is one of the first things they want to make. And so a lot of times it is kind of a premature um, uh, step in their process of, of making a business, but they're just so excited about it that they, they really can't uh, stop obsessing about it. So they come to you and they don't have all the details in place. And so there's good and bad things about that. But, um, but if it's a small business, there is, there's usually, you know, not all the information that you need, but there is enough information to, you know, get an idea out and, um, let them go ahead and check that off their list. So it's not necessarily your idea to, I mean, your job to be like their business advisor. Um, but, uh, you know, just know that, that people get excited about the logo right away. It's one of the first things they want to do. Um, and so, yeah, there may be a lot of, there may be limited info there. All right. Great. Thank you so much. Next up is Nick. Good looking first slide, Nick. Thank you so much. I love this persona. This photo is fantastic. <laughs> I love this kid's little tunic. He looks perfect. A perfect little Shakespeare camp kid. Um, I like that he's into dragons and strawberry lemonade and his parents are a zookeeper and um, an orchestral musician. I just think it's really fun. This is really great thinking. And good job on this. I know it wasn't easy, especially if you've never been to camp before. I can understand there some, uh, some, you know, having a hard time kind of thinking like a kid, but I think he did a great job. I see that he's got some shoes in there, um, a book, some artwork and stuff to draw on and write with and headphones. And I mean, it's just perfect. I love this toothbrush. <laughs> it's great. It's really great. And I really appreciate that you, you worked really hard on, on trying to think like a kid. And, and I think you did a great job overall. This is a good looking mind map. Um, so yeah, I, I, I like where you went here. Really good. I think it's great and good looking mood board there. Really good stuff. Okay. Um, and here's your thumbnails and you went with this one and I, I love it. So you said you have a hard time doing some logo design and I understand um, if it's not your strength and I'm going to try to help you make it a strength. So this part looks great. I love the um, alternating the colors here. There's some movement in here. It's really playful and fun. I love the font that you chose. So the shields look wonderful. It's a really fun idea, uh, just a great concept. So that is solid. You're good there. Your icon is great. And I can tell that you spent the most time on it, you know, because it's, it's, it's good. This part is where we fall short. It feels like an afterthought. And so to tie the two together, I recommend changing the word groundlings to be the arts and crafts font and then making children's summer camp all on one line. You can leave it in this small font, but make groundlings nice and large. So you're going to kind of end up creating a square gestalt there. Okay. Uh, so however large you need to make groundlings under there to make it line up with children's summer camp, the line below it, almost as like a tagline, uh, just make it that big. You have a lot of room between this size font and the children's summer camp font, you know, to get the word groundlings as wide as the shield. But I mean, this is already sort of a wide font, so I don't think it's going to have to be too big. Um, and then you, I don't think you'll need to add any color to the words, but you can see what it looks like with children's summer camp in red and the groundlings in black and vice versa. So just play with those and see what looks the best. Um, make sure you keep them sort of close together so that we can tell that it's all part of one, one logo, um, combined logo, okay? You could also make it a horizontal logo. So if you want to put the groundlings children's summer camp to the right of it, you have that option as well. I think it'll look better stacked though, like you have it. Okay, great. So then when you redo your logo, you'll have to redo your comps, but I'm sorry, your uh, mockups, but I think that'll be fairly easy for you because you already got the images picked out. So these are great and these are really great choices. All right, 
really nice stuff. Excellent. Thank you so much. Next up is Hester. Great looking first slide. Thank you so much. And here is your persona. I love that Hudson is into dragons and camping and Reese's peanut butter cups. This little boy should not be drinking Mountain Dew. He's going to lose his teeth. But um, besides that, uh, just make sure that you check your spelling on these. It looks like um, you have hotties instead of hobbies, and we don't want any typos. So, um, But other than that, great work there. Um, I liked reading about your experience with the body storming. I know that a lot of people didn't go to camps, especially um, a nerdy Shakespeare acting camp. But, you know, it's really good to kind of put yourself in these kids' shoes. And I think you did a great job. You got some extra clothes in here, a water bottle, lots of food and snacks. I think you, I think overall it's great. A hat. Yeah. Smart choices there. So this mind map is fun. I love that you put memories here and then tied it to a camera. Um, I think memories is one of the most important parts about the experience of camp. And so I'm, I think it was really intuitive of you to throw that in there. Good idea. Keep thinking like that. I like that. And here are your logo sketches. And here is your awesome logo. I love these fonts that you chose. Um, when I first looked at the font, I felt like the um, groundlings, the weight of groundlings was a little too much against the thin line and the dragon and the thinness of this um, children's acting camp hunter font. But when I was thinking of how to improve it, I really couldn't come up with any ideas that would make it better than it is. It It's really good. I like the variation of in weight the more I look at it. Um, and I think it's it helps with the information hierarchy to look at groundlings first. And then it has a nice balance with the thin line of the dragon and the children's acting camp font kind of, you know, um, on both sides, top and bottom of groundlings. So I think it looks really wonderful and I really love it. This is also a beautiful color palette. You can't go wrong with um, primary colors, especially for kids stuff. I think it's just fantastic. I love this metal water bottle. Um, yeah, it's cool. It can be reused if they want to or recycled. Um, I think it's, it's really cool. Then the logo looks, it looks really like elegant on there in just this one color. I think it looks fantastic. This is super awesome. Wonderful idea. I love these lunch packs. This is also something that the kids could use over again if they didn't get it all messy on the inside with like peanut butter and jelly or something. This is really cool. Putting the ring on the corner. It's like very modern, um, but we still get the arts and crafts feel with this really awesome font. So I love it. I think these are great ideas. Really nice. Really nice. And you're still using your palette through here. It looks good. Great. Great. So in your reflections here, you mentioned that you had fun with this assignment, but it was also a struggle. It was hard to kind of get in the mind of a, a little boy who going to camp and stuff. And um, I am so happy that you have never made a persona before um, and that you haven't um, made a uh, brand guide before. So I'm glad that you get this experience in this course, as well as um, bodyscaping, I think, is new to all of you. And all of these things are um, really to help you like research a bit and take you out of your comfort zone. You know, the new techniques that we're doing, like the bodyscaping, um, is really just, it's like a weird exercise. And when you first read it, you're probably like, Ugh, I don't want to do that. But then when you do it, it does make you start thinking and it's a little bit fun, right? With sketching out these 30 thumbnails, I know that's a lot and I, I totally get it, but it really, the magic happens once you get past that initial first, um, I'd say six thumbnails or so, that's when it really starts like you really start pushing yourself and just like really stretching your brain to come up with, to dig deep into the concept of your um, business or the logo idea and 
uh, it's just, it's so good for you to do it. So, um, so I'm proud of what you did here. And I think the logo is gorgeous. I love the Nordic uh, dragon. It's fantastic. It's super Shakespeare. Kids are going to love it. They're going to be proud to wear it. Um, and then I love that you went back to your uh, mind map and your body storming exercise to find what kind of items you could put it on. It's good stuff. Really nice work, Hester. Thank you. Next up is Daryl. Good. This is a good looking first slide. Thank you. I love that you based uh, Dylan off of yourself as a young kid. It's really fantastic. A lot of people so far in the course are having a hard time, um, you know, thinking like a young boy. And so this is just perfect. I'm glad that you had like um, true inspiration from it. And um, I love all his happy things and his interest. It's really cute. Great work there. Um, so with the backpack mind map, I understand, you know, you didn't um, have all the items on hand. I really did want you to go through the physical um, process of packing a backpack, though, even if you had placeholders for some of the things that you were thinking of putting in there. Um, but you did end up coming up with uh, good objects to put your logos on. So, And then here's your mind map. And um, yeah, I think it's really cute, really nice. I like the scavenger hunt idea. Here's your logo thumbnails. And I mean, right away you had a great idea, um, but I'm, I'm glad you continued to keep exploring um, through all 30. Good work there. Good looking mood board. Ooh, that's one of my favorite pieces. I love that so much. Excellent, really nice. And I like to see this filigree here. That's really pretty too. And I see that you Got some inspiration from it, so that makes me happy. And here is your brand guide. It looks good. Nice textures and patterns. Fantastic font choices. It looks awesome. I love the texture in the logo. It turned out really great. And I think this second ring, like this negative space uh, ring that's separating the original O symbol with the um, sun rays is really smart. It looks so cool. I love it. It even kind of doubles as a sunflower, which is nice. Um, also a summery uh, kind of idea. And I think that this yellow is really beautiful. This real kind of gold yellow is um, a really nice uh, contrasting color with this yellow, with the with the red. It's really pretty. And I'm glad that you made a stacked version as well because that looks really nice on this water bottle. These water bottles, I should say. And uh, this is fantastic with the pattern that you created. So cool. I love the pattern on the back. It was a nice touch. Um, and this by itself is really great. It's just such a great symbol on its own. It works really nicely on the hat. So we'll look at it closely here. Um, I don't think you need to put this on the front. Uh, so go ahead and get rid of that. Just let the negative space breathe. I think it's okay without that. Same with on this one. That's usually something that goes on the bottom um, of a reusable water bottle, I should say. This looks fantastic. I like the three colors too. That looks nice. Really good. I love this. I love it so much. I would wear this. And here you were just talking about uh, the project being a bit of a challenge, um, but because uh, you didn't want to stray from the original source material. And that is perfect because we don't want to stray from that original branding. It's secondary branding. So we want to play off of it. And I think you did it really perfectly. It looks awesome. So great work here. Thank you so much. Next up is Larky. Good looking first slide. Thank you. And here is your persona of Violet. Um, I like that she's loud and her mom's like, let's get you in some acting and singing classes. And she was really into it um, and that you used your uh, persona to start thinking of some of the objects that she might take to camp. This is a very cute color palette. I love it. Yes, I think she's a perfect 12 year old girl. Next up is the body storming. I know it does feel weird to do this. It's kind of like, oh, why is she making us do this? But I think it does really help you kind of get in the mindset. And maybe, you know, think of things that you might not have thought of if you didn't do it. And it's also a little bit fun. You have to admit, it's a little bit fun. So um, I think you came up with great ideas here. This is really good. 
perfect. I see good things and I see things that my 12 year old would take to camp. So <laughs> it's perfect. Um, next, I, uh, I liked the, uh, in your mind map that you had things like friendly and exciting tones and, um, some of the things that you saw in the arts and crafts movement, like decorative and Gothic inspired and people like shirts. <laughs> I love all, like seeing how you, you thought things out was great. This is a really good looking mood board. Um, yeah, lots of variations in here. Like, look at how different this is compared to this, compared to this. So there's lots of ways to go, but I do see this nice thick black stroke getting used in your logo, um, as well as some awesome fonts. So let's we'll look at, here's your logo sketches. And then here is your logo comp. So I think this is a beautiful, I'm sorry, I didn't have us zoomed out all the way. I love this font. I think it's really fun for the, um, for the camp. Uh, this needs to be children's camp. So you need to have an apostrophe S here. And then um, over here, there's a bit, there's a bit too much contrast between the um, black stroke style and color palette of the sword and feather on top of the red organic O. So what I recommend doing is go ahead and apply that stroke to the O in the background, including like on the cracks, these big thicker cracks here, put that black stroke in there like you did with your feather here. I think it'll look super cute. And then um, if, if there's a way, let me just zoom in here. I was going to say, if there's a way to have your text be the same stroke width as your line here, but I think it is about the same. So like there's some variations in line width. So I think that's all right because there is variations in line width in this font as well. So never mind, you're good there. Um, but I like the spacing. Your line spacing is nice. Um, the gestalt overall is really nice. So just fixing apostrophe S there and trying that black stroke on the O. Uh, you might need to manually draw it in, but you obviously can do that because you've got the skills here. I can see that. So I think that'll kind of pull it all together. Um, yeah, I'll just give it a shot see how it looks. Okay, next is your comps. They look good, really cute. I like this sort of swash on this uh, water bottle. That's nice and cute kids little ringer shirt. Very cute, she's adorable. And then here you were just talking about um, how the exercises helped you uh, learn more about um, not only your uh, audience, but also some Shakespeare stuff and um, and I'm so glad I like, I love hearing that. I know this is fast paced. It is just because it's summer. If it was a fall class, you'd have like three weeks to work on this thing, but, uh, it's not. So we just got to crank through it, but you did a fantastic job overall. And, um, yeah, I'm really pleased with it. So thank you so much. Next up is Abriana. Good looking first slide. Thank you. Here is your persona. This is Harry. And the more I look at this kid, I swear he is, this is like a picture of a famous actor as a kid. And I can't put my finger on it, but I could be wrong, but I think I'm right. <laughs> um, I love his hobbies. Um, make sure that you spell check your, um, your things here. You got a lot of punctuation um, and capitalization things all mixed up there. So uh, just, you know, before you put this on your portfolio, just make sure you double check all your spelling and grammar. And then here's your body storming explanation that you're not in your house, but here's some ideas that you came up with and um, what you thought of. So here's your mind map, and I'm not really seeing any arts and crafts stuff on there. I'm looking, trying to look, I see a little bit, but I'm seeing more way older stuff. Uh, so I just, I know that you're looking for Shakespeare things and it looks like you have some tattoo inspiration, but just make sure that you include on your future um, mood boards stuff from the genre that we're, uh, that we're studying. Okay, and then here is your, um, your mind map. 
Okay, and here's your thumbnails. And here's your branding guide. Let me just scooch this over a little bit. So your color palette's really nice, and I like this texture. It looks good, and your fonts are great. Fonts are fantastic. So I think that the um, this is a super fun idea with the ribbons. I got really excited about it when I saw your thumbnails, your thumbnail sketch. The only thing is, um, is that the the text is is mixed up like this. So it reads as Groundlings Summer Camp Children's. Uh, so what I recommend doing is thickening your banner so it is taller, both of them, and making the font that's on the banners the same height and size, and then um, making, you could put groundlings in the middle and it could say children's summer camp here, or if you wanna keep groundlings at the top and have children's in the center, and have summer camp run along the banner, you can do that as well. Summer camp will be longer like the word groundlings. You just want your banner to come down into the um, circle a little bit more so that you just have a small sliver of white in the center that says children's, and then summer camp along the bottom banner, okay? But um, I mean, it looks like your type on a path looks nice, and uh, this part is losing it the shape a little bit, so just, so just redraw your path when you do the summer camp to trace along the bottom of the banner and then put summer camp um, on the path and make sure it's the same size as the groundlings text, okay? Uh, and I don't think you necessarily need to make groundlings any larger, but making the banner larger will bring more attention to it. It'll give it some room to breathe on the top and the bottom and um, and then you could have children's be about the same height as the fonts that you have on the um, banner. And then it, because right now summer camp is taking the, the first place of the information hierarchy and it shouldn't be. Uh, so if, if groundlings, children's and summer camp are all the same size, then our eyes just gonna read the first thing on the top line as the first part of the information hierarchy, if that makes sense, okay? Um, I love the, the inside of the banner though, I think that's nice, and instead of the gray, you could just make it a darker shade of this cream, um, because that's the only gray thing in your branding, uh, so instead I would just make it a darker shade of the cream, and that um, would work out nicely, okay, great. These are good um, mock-ups. This is really fun. I like that idea. The pin and it's really cute. So when you redo your logo, you'll need to redo these comps, but I think that'll be the easy part for you. All right. So I know it is hard to think about, you know, being a little kid and everything like that, but that's why we do a persona. It's so important to um, figure out who your target audience is so you know who you're designing for. And there's going to be so many times in your career that you're designing for people that you've never designed for. So I think this is really great to get some practice now. And um, overall, you did a pretty good job. Thank you so much. Next up is Jalen. Good looking first slide. Thank you so much. This is a great looking persona. Jasmine is so cute. I love these images so much. Um, I'm I love that she likes um, acting with her friends in the park and she loves strawberries and whipped cream and caramel corn and dancing and um, that her parents are looking for an educational and engaging camp. She's just perfect, perfect, perfect persona. Great job. Next up is your backpack. And I know it's weird, but I'm so happy to hear that you had fun and that it made you to think of things that you might not have thought of. Um, and yeah, that's the whole the whole point of it. So I'm so glad that it went well for you. And these are great ideas. The next up is your mind map. Oh, and I do have to tell you that um, six year old kids also like they put the weirdest stuff in their backpacks when you're when the parents aren't looking. <laughs> so this is actually like um, like really good thinking. But I do like this little keychain. Like there's always some little extra thing. Like oh, I want to bring this because I want to show a friend or. 
I want to bring this because I just like, you know, seeing it every once in a while throughout the day. <laughs> They're so, so crazy, those little kiddos. Okay, so next up is your mind map, and it looks really fun. I like these ideas here. Like I said, um, the bracelet and the pins and the keychain, those are, you know, um, they're really unique compared to, you know, um, a lot of the other things that kind of everybody is thinking of. So it's good to see those in here. And then here are your thumbnails. And here is your logo and um, branding sheet. Sorry, I just had to move it over there. It's nice to see it on a different colored background too, um, as with a, a white fill, so that's nice. I'm gonna return to this in just a moment. Here are your mock-ups, they look gorgeous. I love this color palette so much. That's really cute, really cute. Excellent. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and talk about your logo design. Uh, there's a lot going on. I love these illustrations so much. I love the change in line weight. I think that there's, um, the fonts are really fun. This low fist font is so great with its little ligatures in there. And it looks really nice with the amifer. So it's totally working. I just think there needs to be some editing. Um, so you can still absolutely use these different icons in the branding. It works perfectly as a pattern. Um, I think it's super fun. And you'll see that in a lot of branding that they'll make, you know, a hundred different icons just using the same style and color palette. And they'll use it to make patterns and place on other things. And it's just like, it's, it's a really fun idea. So if you wanted to um, just try it and see if you like it, um, pick one of these objects and put it with the um, Groundlings Children Active Camp. You don't need to include the established in 1999. Um, people have been adding this established thing into like boho kind of um, logos. And uh, it's just not something that, or in like a vintage seal type logo. So it feels to me that this is placed here as a, uh, to fill in some negative space and we just really don't need it. And so I wanted, I want you to just see what this looks like with just the feather, see what it looks like with just the mask, see what it looks like with just the skull. The skull's not necessarily, if it's by itself, I don't know if it's the best icon for a children's acting camp, but I do tie it to Shakespeare for sure. And it is a really fun illustration, so it might work. Um, but I think the first two might be a little more friendly and inviting, you know, and the skull will just work in as one of the extra icons because it works so nicely with the others. So I'm not telling you that you have to change your logo by any means. What I am telling you is that just try editing it and see how you like it because I know that you kind of scrapped the whole idea and um, that didn't give you much time then to uh, finish the whole project. And so it does feel finished to me. I'm not saying that it doesn't. <laughs> I want to make sure I, I'm not like saying the wrong thing because um, I, I do like it. I just want you to try editing it down a bit and see how you like it. If you prefer it edited, then go ahead and move forward with that and redo uh, just the logo here. You know, keep the pattern because it's so fun. And I love it in the background on your notebooks. You know, so just replace it on the places that um, the logo, where the logo lives. But if you don't like the edited version, then just keep this one, okay? Great. All right, thank you so much. Next up is Giselle. Good looking for a slide. Thank you so much. Here is your adorable persona, Ellie. I love that she loves Cadbury eggs because Cadbury is very English, as well as I live with my mom, who's a costume designer, and her dad, who's a theater technician. So, of course, of course, she's going to acting camp, right? This is really great. Very cute. Um, I love that you just like dove right into this uh, body storming exercise. And um, I think that it's the perfect, perfect stuff to go in there uh, for a 10 year old girl. And it's definitely what my daughter would have packed when she was 10. 
And there's always got to be a stuffy. There's always got to be things that like, I don't want her to pack. She puts in there anyways, you know, just extra stuff that she might lose or whatever. But yeah, it's really great. So um, I think all of these items are really perfect. And I love there's a snack in there. Good thinking. Here is your mind map. Um, I like that you put things like soft, bright colors and um, reading and um, dressing up, you know, great ideas there. This is a really fun mood board. Very, very pink. I love the playbills here. And I would have liked to see more, um, more arts and crafts elements in here just to keep you on track with arts and crafts. You really leaned heavy on the theater side. Um, plus, uh, more Shakespeare inspired things since it's the globe. Okay, so here's your sketches and it looks like you ended up going with this one here. So let's, uh, here's your brand guide. So I, I read in your thing that you hadn't worked in Illustrator for a while and I understand that it's, uh, it's not always like riding a bike, is it? Especially when they keep changing it um, and there's constant updates and so things aren't where they used to be and there's new things and yeah, <laughs> I totally get it. Um, so there's, we do need to remember that there this is a secondary logo. It's not a brand new from scratch um, logo or company. So um, I, I feel like this style just isn't quite the right style. We wanted it to be arts and crafts style. Um, this is giving me some sort of 80s vibes and uh, like with this color palette. The color palette is okay though. Like the color palette can definitely, this up here, when I see it with the gold and the pale green, could definitely be arts and crafts. It's more with this swirly black and white, super high contrast texture. That quite is, that's not fitting in, especially retro. Um, those two things are not arts and crafts. So over here, the mask is fine and it's bouncing off of your, um, your text fine. Like there's a nice balance there. We don't need the word the in there. So you can eliminate that altogether especially since freestyle script is not um, arts and crafts era accurate. You know what I mean? So we want to eliminate that because that by taking that out there, that's going to help us get closer to the arts and crafts movement. I don't really feel like Corrine is, is arts and crafts. So I would like you to revisit those arts and crafts fonts. And then seeing it with this square in the background, um, I'm just not, seeing where it's tying into the original globe logo at all. So you might consider just changing this to a, um, a round shape instead, maybe even kind of a donut shape. Uh, it doesn't have to have the wooden texture. It doesn't have to be the exact O symbol of the globe, um, but just referencing the roundness, I think will work better. The other thing that I don't think you need is a stroke on that shape in the background that ties it together. There's just a lot of outlines going on here and you don't need it. Um, so since, uh, yeah, so when you do your, I mean, obviously this up here, your mask is going to need an outline to separate it from the background if it's, um, you know, extending past your circle. And I do like that. I like breaking the frame of the circle. I don't want you really to contain everything in there. It'll feel really squished. Um, but uh, see what it looks like without strokes on your new typeface and see what it looks like with a round shape. You don't have to use the red either. You can stick with your current color palette. It's really pretty. Uh, you just need to figure out a way to reference the original globe logo somehow. Okay, so even if you're using just the font from the globes, um, the original globe logo, that'll work too. You don't have to use the round. You can keep this square or diamond shape. I think, you know, that would be totally fine as well. Okay, all right. And then, um, so I think this gold bottle is cool. I love that it's the gold in your branding and the teal works really nicely with that. And um, so the background texture on here, you know, just consider um, maybe a more arts and crafts background texture or just one of the other colors uh, from your logo. 
yeah, you already had that muted um, teal there. That could work if it's a solid color. Yeah, okay, great. And yeah, so I like the concept behind the logo, the uh, the two masks and stuff and kind of being on this, the opposite ends. Um, it has overall nice gestalt, so that's that's working for it as well, okay? And I know that the timeline for these projects are so tight because it's summer. Uh, if it was during the fall, you'd have the three weeks to work on it. But I appreciate the amount of work that you did get done and um, and what you got done in that time. All right. Thank you. Next up is Sophia. Good looking for a slide. Thank you so much. Here is your persona. This is Harry. And he's 12. And he all his friends are are in drama and he wants to kind of become part of that. I love this whole, um, this history behind it. It's really great thinking. And um, yeah, he's just, he's really great for this camp. I think he's gonna do great. I think he's gonna get over this criticism and stage fright because <laughs> it's gonna be so much fun for him. So I know this is a weird exercise. I know it's new to everybody. I think you did a great job. You packed a charger, smarty pants. Nobody packed a charger. I love to have some costume elements in here. That's so fun. Uh, I think if Charlie or Harry puts these on, he's going to be a hit immediately. So that's really great. You got some extra clothes. You got some notes. You got a book. I think you did a fantastic job here. So way to get out of your comfort zone and give it a try. And I'm glad it was pretty fun for you. Um, this mind map is really cool. I love uh, the elements that you picked up on like birds and um, and like these dark um, patterns over here, as well as thinking about different musical instruments to tie into your logo sketches. I think that's really fun that you picked up on like the delicateness and the intricateness of it. Just fantastic mind mapping. Here's your logo sketches. And look, I do see those um, musical instruments. I think that's really fun. I love it. So here is your brand style guide. And um, I love this, uh, the arts and crafts and railway fonts. I think they're really cool. So that looked really neat. This color palette is awesome. I do have to say, I love the pink with the dark green. It's just so striking. Um, and the whole gestalt of it, this kind of triangle is really fun. And these birds together even make up a mask if you kind of look at it a little too long. And so, um, that's, you know, reminiscent of acting and, um, and stuff. So here's the thing. I don't see how it is tied in to the Shakespeare's Globe logo. So I'm looking at it and I'm trying to think how we can do it. Let me go ahead and look at it a little bit bigger on one of your comps here. Let me bring it back. Well, this one here, we have a, a big ring going on with a pattern in it. But what I'm thinking is instead is what if you put the ring here or below the bird? I kind of like this flower here because it makes it look like the nose of a mask. But maybe the circle comes behind them. That might be even better. So it doesn't need to be the textured red O. It can just be kind of this donut <laughs> that's the same exact, you know, um, like thickness. Um, it doesn't have to be red. It can be one of the colors in your palette. Maybe this light green up here that you have in there. Uh, maybe try black so you could kind of balance your black text. It could just be the stroke of the O, you know, the inside and the outside. That's a nice thin line that about the same thickness as one of these uh, fonts down here. So just try a few variations there. Um, because I don't really want you to change your text. It looks so cool. I was going to say you could use the text from the original logo and replace one of these lines with that, but I just think that this is a really successful pairing and it doesn't need, you don't really need to do that. That, that part's not broken, so don't fix that. None of it's broken. It's just not tying into that original logo, and that's important. 
So the other thing that I do see is up here, none of these items have a stroke, but down here, the birds have strokes. Um, so if you're gonna stroke here, then you need to stroke everywhere. I personally try not to have anybody use a black stroke. I try to push people away from the black stroke as much as possible. I'm just zooming in here, so let me see what it looks like. Nope, no success. Okay, there we go. Oh, you don't have a black stroke, you have a purple stroke. Okay, I see that. Um, I mean, it does help separate the wings a bit. But I don't think that the feet need it. I don't know. I think if you have stroke somewhere, it needs to be everywhere or not have it anywhere. So give them a try and see what looks best and see how you can incorporate that O somewhere, okay? And then uh, once you redo your logo, you'll have to redo your comps. But I like these other um, elements that you added too. I think that's really nice. You can have these little stickers. I'm not crazy about this pattern on the O. The logo itself already has so much going on in it, which is okay. I don't need to have a super minimal modern logo. That's not really the point of um, doing this arts and crafts style project. But this is just a bit too much. It's, it's starting to distract from the logo. So um, you could, if you wanted to use the pattern, maybe place it on the sleeves um, or place, uh, you could place it on the inside of the mug, um, you know, something like that. Okay, great. Looks good. And I love that you talked about, you know, um, your inspiration from the William Morris's Peacocks and Dragon and, um, and that this was a pretty fun ex exercise for you. So I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. All right, next up is Reese. Good looking first slide. Thank you so much. Here is your persona of Lila. She's six and she's adorable. And um, the three things that make her happy also make me very happy. She loves dogs, flowers, and dancing. And her moms are very excited to help her pursue her passion. And I just love it. It's very cute. I love this. Um, this picture made me laugh so much, I think, because of these eyes staring at me. But uh, here you just explained that you didn't really like this exercise too much. You didn't think it was necessary. And uh, so thank you for your... Um, frankness. Uh, but overall, um, you did a great job at it, even if you didn't think it was necessary. I love seeing a bag of Cheez-Its. I love seeing all these little pieces of candy and pens and stickies and um, the water bottle. I think it's really great. And so here is your brainstorming, or I'm sorry, mind mapping. Looks good. And here are your sketches. So this sketch here um, helps me understand what the shape is in your logo. It looks really great here. And I think that um, it, gets, it gets lost here. So I know you mentioned in your reflection at the end that you don't feel like it was your best work. And I think that it's very close to being really good work. So um, overall, this is beautiful gestalt. I love this vertical, um, rectangle. It's very uh, art, art, uh, arts and crafts. These fonts are beautiful together. Um, I like this little amp, uh, at sign. I think that's really cute. And yeah, I love the different weight that you used in the fonts. I think overall that looks really fantastic. This background is nice. Uh, the two tones of the um, this kind of tan color here works well. So where we, where it's feeling weird, I think, um, is that we lose the black stroke here and we get this big dark black shape. So if you squint your eyes and look at this, all of a sudden you have super bright contrast. You've got stark white with blackest black with super bright red, but then behind it, you've got these earth tones. And so to make it all come together, 
I don't think you should have the white in there. I don't think it's necessary. Um, you could have this light color come through again, and that will get rid of that stark contrast because our eyeball is going to go straight to this part where we have the brightest bright and the darkest dark next to each other. And that's not necessarily where we want the eye to go first, right? That's not the first thing in the information hierarchy. So, um, so if you change out that, uh, w that white for your lightest tan, and then if you put a stroke on the red that matches the same like line quality as you did back here, and if you invert your um, building to look more like this, you don't need to add all these lines and stuff, but I think that maybe just adding this one line here at the corner, um, I don't know. You'll have to play with it a bit. Uh, I think having all the lines will be too busy. But adding one line here and adding an outside stroke and having this stroked as well with the uh, darker tan in there will overall just help it uh, so that the only thing that's really pulling your eye is the red O and then you're looking at the rest of it as, as a whole. Right now these feel like two pieces overlapping each other and that feel, that's what feels a little weird and it's, it's a great concept um, and doesn't need to feel weird. It's so close to being super cohesive within this, this image here, okay? Yeah, and then if you wanted to pull the eye to some text instead as your first uh, information hierarchy object, make it that red and that'll balance that out a bit, okay? Great. Okay. This color palette is so beautiful. I love these two colors here. I think it's really pretty. It looks nice. And I like seeing these uh, William Morris patterns in here. That looks cool. So this is really successful here. When you, when you redo your logo, just make sure you reapply it to these mockups. But this is really fun. You put some stationery in there. It looks really nice. A little invite to the camp. This tote bag looks good. This is a beautiful, like a good scale for this. Um, that looks really good. I love this. This is a great idea. This is really fun. And your, look how nicely your color palette balances off of there. It's so pretty. So that's really nice. Super arts and crafts. And this looks good too. I love this humongous scale on the water bottle. I, I say take up as much space as you can. And I think it looks really good. All right, so I know that we're really scrunched into a short time block, but you did a great job, and I'm glad that you enjoyed learning more about the arts and crafts movement, right? Thanks so much. Next up is Katie. Great looking for a slide. Thank you so much. And here's your persona of Blair. She's super British um, by your description. She, like, she likes squash juice. I love that so much and Cadbury Dairy Milk. Um, she loves the Princess Bride. I mean, it's so fantastic. And I love her hair. Oh my gosh. I think I would kill for that hair. I just love it. Um, so, and I love this part down here about her future interests. It sounds like me when I was a kid. She wants to be an actress, a marine biologist, maybe a pastry chef, maybe a paleontologist. <laughs> I just love it. So cute. And then I'm so happy to hear that you enjoyed this exercise. Um, some people didn't, so a lot of, most people did. I know it was weird stepping out of your comfort zone, but you've got some really great ideas here. I love that you grabbed your glasses. A lanyard was a really great idea. Um, a stand for scripts is a really interesting idea as well. You got some snacks in there and a water bottle. So really, really great work there. And here's your mind map and this helped you kind of uh, narrow it down a bit. So that's really nice. And your thumbnails. And here's your brand guide. So this looks fantastic. I love your final color palette. I know you said you kind of struggled with it wasn't feeling fun enough. And I think that adding that orange was the perfect thing. Orange is a really special color that is super underutilized as well as yellow. Um, so red is one of the most attention grabbing colors. But we can also associate a lot of negative things with red, like danger, because it's the same color as blood. Um, it's also like 
associated with sex, which isn't necessarily appropriate <laughs> for a children's camp kind of association. So orange, it still stimulates that same excitement and um, attention grabbing uh, um, aspect that red has, but it's safer, right? Because it doesn't make you think of blood and it's not necessarily sexy. So it is perfect for kids stuff. And I think that was a really great choice there. It also bounces off the green so beautifully. So really nice um, choices. I think your feather turned out so pretty. It complements the way that you um, kind of vectorized the, uh, the circle so that it's not this like perfectly wood print, but it still has the remnants of some of the spots on there. Uh, they match really nicely together. They look th seamless. You know, that's a really nice marriage there. And then having the green at the bottom with the font is just really beautiful. So you have a, like a three-tone logo that's working nicely. All the scale is good. I love this font so much. I think it's, I just love the arts and crafts font with these beautiful um, ligatures and how they have the O's underlined. I think it's so cool. So really nice work. It turned out just perfect. I love it. I love it. These mock-ups are also fantastic. These are just super fun ideas. Um, this logo looks so great with this band around the bottom and your arts and crafts flowers coming in. It's just awesome. I love it with the green. Oof. And then you've got this pattern that you created on your lanyard. So cute. It's really great. And I love that dark red of the lanyard, like the kind of, um, I wouldn't say brick, but it's, it's just a great great color for that and this orange background it looks so good here look at these colors just popping off the green band this is a fantastic mock-up this is so cute Katie I love it I'm sorry Caitlin <laughs> I called you Katie and great looking shirt it's just so cute it's all so good so um here you were talking about you enjoyed learning about the arts and crafts movement which I'm so excited about and you mentioned changing your colors. And I like that you learned that a lot of these colors were used in the costumes for Shakespeare's plays. I think that's super interesting and fun, a fun little fact. Um, and yeah, overall, it's just super work. Thank you so much. All right, next up is Kayla. Good looking for a slide. Thanks so much. And here is Ophelia. She's perfect for Shakespeare camp. She's nine years old. She loves nerdy gummy clusters, <laughs> and I love that um, uh, her parents like to go to um, art shows and attend exhibits and stuff. I think that's really fantastic. So her parents are lovers of the arts, which makes this um, really great for Ophelia as well. So at first, you were apprehensive. I get it. I think everybody was. I know I would be as well if I was reading this. I'd definitely roll my eyes and be like, why is this instructor making me do this? But I'm glad that overall it was pretty fun for you and that it did help you think of things that you might not have um, originally thought of just by brainstorming. So that's the whole idea of it, just to get out of your comfort zone and, and try to get in the head of a kid. So great work there. Thank you so much. Yeah, you have really good ideas. I like seeing a little pencil bag and a sketchbook and um, like books and a journal and a uh, water bottle. Great work. Next up is your mind map. This is so cute. I love these little extra things here for drawing during downtime and enough to make with friends. I think that's very cute. Really nice thinking. I like, I like that, um, the reasoning behind those. I think that's fantastic. Really fun. Really, lots of great ideas there. And here is here are your uh, thumbnails. And this mood board is awesome. There's so much here, which I'm so happy to see. Uh, you've got like a camera for making memories with your friends at camp, which is really great. And lots of activities. You, I see some um, fantastic uh, um, arts and crafts inspiration there and some Shakespeare stuff, which looks so good, and then just some being a kid stuff, lots of English stuff. So thank you for adding all those things, including your color palette. And so here's your standard sheet. It was great reading about how you felt this was really helpful to make this and how you use the UNLV one as you're designing at your job all the time. So 
that makes me so happy. It, it's really a guide to come back to while you're designing. And um, so I'm, I'm just so happy that, uh, that you're happy. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about your logo. So I love the mask idea. I love the incorporation of the, the ring in the background. And the banner is super fun with the mask. Um, these fonts are fun. They're really nice. So there is a lot of heaviness going on. It doesn't quite feel balanced. And the Shakespeare globe, Shakespeare's globe is taking the, is pulling uh, information hierarchy from groundlings. So when I squint and I look at this, it feels heavy on the left because I've got the black mask on the left plus the black ring right behind it. My eye is first going to those masks because they're the most contrasty, like the biggest stark contrast, um, like difference, you know, in weight and um, light to dark. So the masks are pulling our eyes first. That's okay. It doesn't have to be the words first. It can be the symbols. That's totally fine. But then second, my eye is going to Shakespeare's globe because this is the next thickness. You know what I mean? Like... Uh, the weight of this font is so thick. And then I go down to groundlings because the size of this font is about the next size down, if not maybe even a little taller than this one. Um, and then it goes to children's acting camp. So here are my recommendations for this. Um, so instead of using um, um, black and white, first of all, you have this fantastic color palette. And um, I think that using uh, your color palette is, is fairly feminine and this is a camp for boys and girls. Uh, so you may consider darkening this um, greenish blue color a little bit to make it uh, appeal to boys just a bit, you know, because uh, we do have these two more feminine colors. So if we had one that was just a little more masculine because um, you mentioned how you want kids to want to wear them uh, we want we want all kinds of kids to wear them right so uh, we got to cater to everybody and as much as we can um, so that's one one thing there is um, is just making this part of your color palette just a little darker like the same kind of darkness as this yellow or orangey color and you're just going to give that kind of density to this bluish green color and then so instead of having your mask be black and white, you could have one be um, the yellow color or even this tan, you know, this like light color here. And then this one be this bluer color. Uh, you could leave the strokes the same. You could leave the ring in the back black as well if you wanted to. Or you can play with the third color. Maybe the yellow might look cool and not have any black at all anywhere in your piece. So, you know, you could just experiment with changing the color of the strokes um, and the font to those three colors and see, you know, what you like. I was trying to see if maybe this sherberty color might work too, but not quite sure. So just, you know, just mess with it and see what you like. Um, the next thing I recommend doing is uh, swapping fonts. So have Shakespeare, the font of the Ephra, be the word groundlings, even though, you know, groundlings looks fantastic in this uh, JSON font, but um, we want groundlings to be the first thing that they read. So if by giving it this bolder font of Ephra, that's where their eye is going to go first. And then have um, Shakespeare's Globe and Children's Acting Camp be the same font and the same size, as well as um, the same capitalization. So if you capitalize Shakespeare's Globe, then you'll want to capitalize Children's Acting Camp. I know that's going to stretch these words out a bit. So it could be cute to have Shakespeare's Globe all lowercase, like the Children's Acting Camp. That could be something that kind of lightens it and makes it more kid-friendly. Okay. So even though Shakespeare's Globe is no longer in its, its original font, it'll be okay because you're already referencing the ring and it will really help groundlings stand out. So then the third thing that I recommend is um, this floral pattern 
is just, uh, it's, I, I understand that um, arts and crafts use floral patterns, but they were really different than this floral pattern. This floral pattern with the opposite checkerboard and stuff is, is just not feeling arts and crafts. So um, what I love about these is I love the scale of your logo. It's fantastic. I love it huge on these um, items. So that's really working for you. These little touches of pattern are such a fun idea. So if you could instead swap out the flowers for something that's more arts and craft, I think that would really drive the arts and crafts feel home even more. Like you have this gorgeous arts and crafts font already. Um, and then it it's just not melding with this uh, type of pattern down here, okay? And I like seeing the two different tones, like this this uh, the logo on the black and then the logo on the white. And I think if you do change the colors, they'll still work on both. The light mask without a stroke, uh, you know, you'll need to stroke that with whatever color you color that mask, you know what I mean? Great. But these are fantastic ideas for the merchandise and um, good looking uh, mock-ups too. So when you change your logo, make sure you change your mock-ups as well for the final presentation. All right, thank you so much. And next up is Amanda. Good looking for a slide, thanks so much. And here is Riley. Riley's things that make her happy sound exactly like my daughter's. So <laughs> she's spot on and very cute. And I'm so happy to hear that you liked this uh, exercise and that you felt like it really kicked off the um, the process. So that makes that just fills me with joy to hear that. Um, yeah, I think that you know people. There's a lot of different types of learners. Some people are more physical learners. Some people are more visual learners. Some people are more literal learners. And so uh, you know everybody's going to react to these um, these different types of research differently, but um, I'm just so happy when I hear that something went well. <laughs> so good work here. You thought of really fun things. I love seeing this camera here. I love seeing some um, sunblock is a great idea. You've got a book and a hat, extra clothes, headphones, a stuffy, your lunchbox, really great. And then this is uh, your mind map. There's some things that I really like in here like that you separated out some comfort objects. A camera and souvenir is a really great idea. A bag for nature. A bag for nature findings is a really fun idea. That's such a kid thing and I love it. So really great thinking. And then here are your thumbnails and more thumbnails. This is a really wonderful mood board. Um, I love seeing the camera here. You've got your quill and we've got a lot of really great arts and crafts and Shakespeare um, items, plus some kids stuff, which is just wonderful, some acting kids at uh, camp kind of ideas. So that's really, really good, really good looking mood board there. And then here is your design guide. And I love the fonts that you chose and your color palette is nice. Let's keep going. We're gonna look at your mock-ups real fast and they're super clean. I love the scale on these mock-ups of your, the, the logo. I like using as much as you can, as much space as you can. And then that you mentioned here that um, you uh, had a difficulty choosing how to incorporate the Shakespearean theme without being too literal. I think you did make a good choice with the feather quill working with the, the O, the ring in the um, original logo it looks nice. And that you got um, inspiration from William Morris's organic swirls and that's how you why you incorporated the swirl in the logo. So let's go ahead and take a look at the logo. Um, I just mentioned the things that are working plus I love the fonts. When I look back at your original sketch you had groundlings and children's acting camp above the line and not that you needed to include at the globe I don't think it needs it but this does up here feel like better gestalt than what happened here. This is like sort of an L shape or like an angle and it just uh it's not feeling quite balanced you know what i mean so what i recommend is uh i have a few recommendations 
first of all, your color palette is pretty limited, um, which which can be good. Um, but you do have room for like one more um, like sort of opposite color of this red that you could use in your branding if you wanted to. Uh, or you could use different values of this red as well. Um, you could even use different values of this gray here too, which you sort of do in your gradient. So I, I never recommend combining stroked items with non-stroked um, items in a graphic. Uh, so, and I, I mostly tell people to just get rid of the stroke, especially if it's a black stroke. So I want you to try your pen without the black stroke. I know you have some fine detail down here and you might think that it'll get lost, but I think it'll be okay without it and it'll look even better. Uh, it'll marry, marry well with the ring that doesn't have a stroke. I also, I don't think that the gradient is necessary, um, but it's not uh, unnecessary. <laughs> you know what I mean? So get rid of the stroke first, see how you feel about that. Try it, the feather without the gradient, see how you feel about that. But that's not the first thing I want you to do. The first thing I want you to do is is refigure the the font the text. So these fonts are great. Try Groundlings up here, and then try Children's Acting Camp in one line, uh, not not broken like this, but all in one line. Um, and you don't need to include the um, bullets in between Children's and Acting. But if you do want to add it at the end of Children's and the end of Camp. You can see how that looks, but you might not need those. You have a lot of other elements going on, so you really might not need those elements either. The other thing is that there's a lot of different line weights that we're working with. We've got this, um, these very bold lines over here that are pulling our eye because there's a lot of contrast going on. We've got this thick swirl at the bottom. We've got this thick G less thick uh, text next to it, and then very thin text underneath. So I can see how the stroke on this feather quill, I mean, on the feather is uh, similar to the font weight down here, but you might just end up um, changing Children's Acting Camp to Morris Troy and see what it looks like all as one font and then saving that uh, text for other branding if you were to have other branding. Or try, um, yeah, I'd say give that a try first and see how it looks. All right. So yeah, so try those. Move your text up here and try it. You're going to frame the bottom of the logo with this swatch here. Swash. I mean, that's just, or, you know, this swirly decoration. <laughs> and then, um, then try getting rid of the strokes. See how you feel about that then see how you feel about it, the feather without the gradient. If it's too flat and you love the gradient, then leave the gradient. But um, other than that, uh, yeah, I really don't think you need the, the stroke. One more thing to look at is this, the head of this quill seems really large compared to other images that I've seen of quills online. When you're drawing something, be sure that you draw from a photo and not from other people's illustrations. Um, so if you actually found a pen that looks like that and has the head that large, then go for it. Um, but you might consider shrinking just the head, that uh, pen, just a tiny bit. You might lose your circle in that thing, but that's okay. You know, it's all right. Um, because when you have something like this big on a t-shirt, you'll see it there, you know. Uh, it's, it's just, that's like a... A hazard of having tiny details in a logo you got to be careful of scaling right it's something that you always have to be considerate of all right so um yeah and then when you redo your logo you'll have to redo your comps but i think that won't be too rough okay um so i'm glad to hear that um overall it sounds like you liked the assignment and you learned a lot about arts and crafts and stuff and I think it turned out really well. Thanks so much. Thank you, everyone. I cannot wait to see your assignment to creations.